Hi, my name is Jim Ileggio from Grand Piano Solutions, and I'm offering this Falcone Grand Piano. It's a five foot three inch instrument uh, produced in 2005 and originally came from China. So, I'm a high end artisan rebuilder, and you might ask, well, why am I selling a Chinese entry level piano? Well, I'm not. I'm selling a Chinese American piano, and I'll explain what I'm doing here. So, why would I do this? Um, really nice pianos cost a lot of money. 35000 45000 and more. And many people who really want a nice sounding piano and a nice playing piano can't afford that kind of money. So, I can't fix that economic problem. I mean, that's life. But, occasionally, what ha comes into my shop where I see an opportunity where a piano like this, which has a great finish, a cherry finish, uh, in great condition, uh, is offered to me for very short money. And what I can do when I get the basic core at a really low price is that I can afford to put the $15,000 it takes for me to turn it into a really nice instrument. So a really nice instrument at an entry level price, but performing way beyond entry level uh, entry levels. So my goal is to create an entry level piano for someone who needs to have a nice sounding piano and doesn't mind not having a fancy brand name, but wants something that plays really nice and has been attended to by an artisan, someone who really takes a lot of time on every single project. And I took a lot of time on this project. Um, so it is a Chinese American product at this point and here is the American part. When these pianos come to the US, almost universally, they are hard to tune pianos. Now, why do you as the owner care about the piano being hard to tune? I mean, that's the technician's problem. Well, actually, it's your problem too, because if the technician can't tune it, or if it's really hard to tune, number one, he will not want to come service your piano, and number two, even more and more important, is he can't or she can't tune it really clean, really well tuned, really just nail all the intervals. And the sound of, an, of a piano is about 75% the tuning. And if the piano will not cooperate, your piano will never sound good. And that's a, that's a situation with many pianos, actually. They don't sound good because the tuners can't, sound, can't tune them really well. So this piano tunes like a dream. Uh, what I do is the first thing it does when it comes in, this plate comes off, this, the cast iron plate comes out, and I grind away many of the plate conditions, the, the cast iron conditions up here that create a very aggressive termination angle and other um, parameters which make it difficult for the strings to move over the friction points. So it's, you may not think that's important for you as an owner, but it really is. And I take that as number one in fixing these pianos. Um, it has been repinned with German pins, uh, tuning pins. Um, and the scaling for the long bridge, which is the treble bridge, the plain wire, is, has been rescaled, and the wire is a French wire uh, produced by Paulello, Stephen Paulello, nickel-plated um, wire, and it's the only wire I use now. Um, the bridge, the long bridge, which if you do anything when you're rebuilding a piano, the terminations are so important, and they determine how nice a piano is going to sound. The terminations, meaning where the strings are, where the strings are, are, are 
are, are terminated <laughs> by the pin, by the bridge pins. So these terminations have to be redone. The, the bridge has to be recapped. I don't know what kind of wood they use there, but I don't care because I took it off, and instead I'm using some of the best hard maple I've ever seen, and I have a whole a whole load of it here now. Um, so it's recapped with really nice hard maple, and as far as the pinning on the bridge, this piano has titanium bridge pins. In this country, there's only one other company who makes a piano with titanium bridge pins, and that company charges $325,000 for their piano. And there's another one in Germany who charges somewhere around 300K for their piano. We're talking about entry-level piano here. I'm using titanium pins because I've been experimenting with them and I wanted to experiment with them on this piano and it works. It worked nicely. So um, you have a unusual setup on the bridge and it's a setup that you can hear. Um, the soundboard, while the plate is off and being worked on, the soundboard, we reconstitute all the glue joints for the rib to panel connection to the soundboard. We shape the soundboard to make sure that, especially at the back end where small pianos tend to be a little weak, is, is if you give there enough amp, uh, freedom for the board to move and give it, move, to have some, some decent amplitude, uh, you'll get a nice sound, and this piano's got a nice, a, a nice bottom end. Um, so we shaped that and relieved some of the, some of that soundboard back there. Um, and then there's the action. So let me take this apart, and well, I'll just take it apart here, and I will show you what's going on at the action. So in our Chinese-American makeover, what we've got here is these are carbon fiber uh, hammer shanks. The hammer shank is, is next to the bridge pins and the, and the bridge cap as far as what must be done to get a piano to sound nice is that there must be really nice hammers and these shanks must be, must be done over so you can get a good precise attack when, when, the, when the hammer hits the strings. So these are carbon fiber, WNG, Wessels, Nickel and Gross produces it. Um, they are in California and also in Haverhill, Massachusetts, um, part of the Mason and Hamlin Company. And um, these shanks, these hammer shanks, are used in conservatory pianos all over the country where you need to have stable parts which can take a beating. The hammers are produced by Ray Negron of Ronson Piano Hammer Company in New York. And the, bake, the felt is a bacon felt. Bacon is produced in Boston. Um, and I use the bacon felt because it is, it is it's a, it's a density which is very similar to the kind of densities hammers had on them at the turn of the century, at the turn of the 20th century. Um, so it's just really important to get a nice warm sound. So this is now a completely re revamped action. Um, it feels really good and uh, it's, 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 it's no, it has, jet we have jettisoned the parts, the Chinese parts that were not something you'd want at a piano and, uh, and have created an, uh, a Chinese American piano. And it's a, it's a nice instrument. So I'll put it back together and play something for you.
Thank you.